Well, markets are closed today as the country bids its final farewell to the late President George Herbert Walker Bush. Yet there's still a lot of fallout after yesterday's dramatic 800-point decline in the Dow. In fact, I think, and I want everyone to understand, there were several non-fundamental reasons for that sell-off. They included Trump's terror tweet, uh, you know, yield in inversion, of which we just talked about, and the possibility of a, a possible recession. The New York Fed president uh, comments on interest rates putting the Fed back in play. A lot of confusion over Brexit. Uh, it's looking sloppy over there. And then there's technical issues like machine and computer trading run a muck. Get this, folks. As soon as the S&P 500 crossed below the 200-day moving average, look at that. The bottom fell out. There was billions of dollars of instant selling across the board. Here to help break it all down now, Kalpbaum Capital Management President and Fox News contributor Gary Kalpbaum, Heritage Capital President Paul Schatz, and stock swoosh Melissa Armo. Paul, let me start with you. A lot of reasons for yesterday's sell-off. Uh, you know, pick your favorite one. Uh, to me, though, so many of them had nothing to do with fundamentals, and all of it, the, you know, the biggest items, the headlines, were all about speculation. Well, that's right. I mean, you think about it. First of all, Dow went up 1,500 points from after Thanksgiving until Monday's close, and we gave back 800 yesterday. Grand scheme of things, not a huge deal. What's interesting about yesterday, I really felt especially in the professional market, there was some panic going on. You just mentioned it. I saw five huge institutional sell programs where it was get me out at any price, get me out right now, almost in, in panic form. And you're right, the, on the fundamental side, how did people go to bed on Monday knowing the yield curve was flat, wake up on Tuesday and say, oh my gosh, it's now, the, you know, the threes and fives are slightly inverted and the twos and tens are really close. I mean, there was a whole confluence of non-economic, non-corporate factors involved just for yesterday. Not that the economy isn't slightly slowing, but just the fact that yesterday all the all the ducks got together in their row and it was a confluence of bad things right. in the close. You know, Gary, of course, you listen to the markets, you watch them, and, and sometimes it doesn't necessarily matter what the answer is. You pay attention to what the market is trying to tell us. Well, look, with all due respect, before we rallied 1,500 points, we dropped 2,000 points uh, in nine and a half days. So you got that's the bigger picture. Look, you, Charles, in front of me, I have 600 new yearly lows in the market with no major indexes uh, breaking the lows. And on this list is a slew of city groups or East West Bank Corp or Goldman Sachs. And I just think this is all telling us something at this juncture. This is not just about what's happened the last month, month and a half. Foreign markets topped out months and months ago, and now we're hearing Germany and Japan are, are contracting right now. I think something up, and, I, and, and the main statement I want to make is we had better not break the lows that we've had over the last two, three weeks, because if we do, we're going to start, start talking in the weeks ahead of bear market for the major indices. And I have to tell you, uh, uh, last Monday, I thought we were going to have a rally. I just think it was compressed over a five-day period because of the Fed and because of the whatever trade agreement we had, normally that usually lasts a month and uh, bearish we go again. So I, I think we got some trouble here. Melissa? I'm bullish in the market. I'm, I'm, I'm not bearish, okay? We are very far away from breaking the uptrend. Technically speaking, the Dow would have to gap down overnight and break 23,000. Although that could happen, it's unlikely that that will happen. I expected another big sell-off day. It was a week ago. We talked about that rally in the Fed. I said, I think we have another big red day. And then after the gap up on Monday, what it was What was so Tuesday. important about having another big red day? Is that sort of a test of the market? No, but I'm saying that I think it's a shakeup. So, for example, usually you, ha you had that rally that came in with the Fed news, and then you had a big gap up in the market from Friday night into Monday that really didn't happen for any reason at all because there was no agreement made with China on tariffs. It was just the idea of putting off the hold of it for a little bit more period. But the market really loved that. That was the biggest gap up in the S&P going back as long right. as I can in my right. chart since 1999. And that's not nothing. That's something. I know we sold up yesterday, and there was a big sell-off day, and that's true. But I'm saying the 
there's volatility a, is here to stay. Okay, here volatility stay. is here to stay. So what's a long-term investor? What are you looking at long-term long investor? Investors? If you long-term and you don't need your retirement money right now or in the next six months. Are there specific months, stocks they should be looking at? There, I like, you know what? Ulta. Ulta just made new highs not that long ago. Ulta fell, obviously, with everything else yesterday. Ulta looks good as a buy. And obviously, like, so like the favorites, Netflix, Apple, all of these stocks and the market, too, are still holding the uptrend. Ulta, Amazon, Apple, and even Walmart, it looks really good, even after the sell-off yesterday. I'm not saying right. buy tomorrow. I'm saying watch those stocks for a turnaround before other things. All right. Uh, guys, I wish we had more time. Gary, Melissa, Paul, great stuff. Appreciate the expertise and the passion. Thanks, Charles. Meanwhile, General Motors CEO Mary Barr is heading to Capitol Hill. She's going to face some really tough questions from senators on the company shutting down their plants. We're going to tell you where GM made a lot of mistakes, and it didn't just start this year.